Hi everyone, it's the English Cinema here, and this video was brought to you through the EA Creator Network. I received early access to The Sims 4 Horse Wrench so that I could make all these early access videos to you. Try and get them up before the release of Horse Wrench. I know it's very close to release. Also, just to let you know, we were playing on an earlier build, so fingers crossed any issues that I ran into throughout any of these early access videos will be fixed. I have tried reporting the issues that I did run into. But let's steer our horses down these winding trails of Chestnut Ridge and explore the brand new world. This community formed when several groups embraced their mutual connection to horses and the land. The area soon became known as a hub for all things equestrian, a town steeped in expertise with raising and training horses set against the beautiful and expansive landscape. Over time, the area became famous for another endeavor as the rich soil brought in in new enterprise of nectar making. Thanks to the hard work of everyone involved, the region flourished and became the chestnut ridge it is today. There aren't any new lot types included with this pack. The dance barn is just known as a nightclub and then the bar is just a bar. Obviously we do get an equestrian center, but it is just a rabbit hole. So therefore it's not its own thing. You can't build an equestrian center or anything like that. They did call out the expansive landscape. I will say it does feel big because obviously Obviously, the neighborhoods are quite large, not in the sense that there are loads of lots around it, don't get me wrong, this isn't like a Windenburg situation. However, they have created trails, they've used a lot of set design to make it actually feel very immersive, and I do quite like how big it feels and just how many objects they actually have dotted around the world. However, having said that, because these neighborhoods are actually so open and so expansive, sometimes I did feel as if they felt a little bit empty and I don't think they were like I definitely saw townies spawning and walking around I saw Travis Scott literally ride a horse up to my ranch gates but I think it feels quite random to see those townies because there are so many areas for them to really be and I think you actually will see sims out with horses more if you can figure the neighborhood stories so this is actually turned on by default you actually get the new option of families being able to order automatically rescue horses. But be sure to turn that off if you don't want random base game townies getting a horse every now and again. The most important things are that we get 13 lots in total and it is made up of three different neighborhoods. We're gonna start off with my personal favorite out of the three neighborhoods and that is of course Galloping Gulch. Lauded as one of the go-to regions for horse riding, the gulch is chock full of gorgeous trails and stunning outlooks true. Explore the gulch's wonders as you honor the noble horses that have passed on at Steed's Rest. Okay, not gonna lie, did not notice Steed's Rest. Explore the perilous dread horse caverns, which I talked about those in my gameplay video if you want to go check that out. Enjoy time under the stars at Saddle Summit Campgrounds. This neighborhood is actually made up of three different lots. So we have a 120 by 15, which is a rental. You have 120 by 20, which is an occupied residential that's actually where Don Gooseman lives and then you have 150 by 50 which is kind of the ranch of this area and that is an empty residential and it's actually where I had my sims live he's a bit of a legend if you ask me although I will say I really didn't see him much which was kind of sad because he was my neighbor mentor to Sienna and Umba's mother this legendary horse champion retired and settled in Galloping Gulch with his trusty steed Duke to live a life of simple pleasures Don and Duke enjoy the spoils of their hard work in the vast beauty of the gulch. They live at Canyon Crossing. This scenic outlook is a perfect place to saddle up and hit the trails. This area is ideal for gazing across the canyon, admiring the natural rock bridge, and exploring all the mysterious wonders. You'll actually be able to find Dread Horse Caverns really, really easily if you head to Don's home. It's kind of just like at the back, down in the ravine. It's surrounded by trees, but you can still see the cave entrance. And his lot is the first one we come across that actually has the brand new lot challenge. This is wild prairie grass. If you play on any of the lots that have that lot challenge, there will be prairie grass from the get-go. I will say throughout my gameplay, I didn't really see this as a challenge whatsoever. That might have been because I had mini sheep and mini goats. I also had horses, which all do graze on the grass. And then also I was making nectar from the grass. I was using it to feed my horses so that I didn't have to pay for horse food. So I think I just kept really on top of it. There is actually 
actually a swimmable area in this neighborhood. It's actually a little like pond area that has the rainbow over it. There's a waterfall. Horses cannot swim, but your sims can. Also, horses can't drink from rivers or ponds or anything like that, which I do feel is a slight missed opportunity, especially after a long ride through a canyon. Which speaking of, this area is quite mountainous. I did notice that my camera was quite jumpy. And then obviously you do have a lot of trails. This is why it's my personal favorite. I feel like it's the most fun to explore on your horse. I feel like there's so much to do. There obviously is a sleeping bag included in this expansion. So you can kind of put that in your inventory, take some snacks for your horse and your sim, and then kind of just go out and like live your life for a few days. Don't get me wrong. If you send your horses riding a lot, you'll get used to seeing the same things. There's not like loads on offer. And sometimes your horses will like run down to something and then turn around and then go a different way. But along those trails, there are jumps, there are barrels so you can work on your horse skills. There are rest spots. There are toilets or bushes for you to use. I know that one of you asked me, are there many harvestables around? And I did notice whilst I was playing, there was a couple of grape bushes on the trails. There was also diggables and there were some frog logs basically near the fishing spots. Next up, we have a new Appaloosa, not the old Appaloosa that came with the Sims 3 pets. Actually, it is a little bit like Sims 3 pets because horse competitions, still a rabbit hole. New Appaloosa is the town center area. I feel like you probably will be traveling to it an awful lot if you do want to use the equestrian center. We have one 20 by 20, which is an empty residential, free for you to move into. We have three 30 by 20s. One of them is actually an occupied residential. Sienna lives there. You have one nightclub and you have one bar. And then there is one 40 by 30, which is the training park. The nightclub is known as the Rusty Horseshoe. Yeehaw! Come on down to the Rusty Horseshoe for a grand old time. No need to worry about being all fancy like those nectar folks. The Rusty Horseshoe Dance Hall welcomes all types and promises good company, food, and boot stomping ranch dancing. Come say howdy and take a load off after a day of hard work on the ranch. As a multiple time ultimate horse championship winner, that's a mouthful, with her horse Salt Lake Flapjack, or Flapjack for short, Sienna is happy to share her indigenous wisdom and train horses to become skilled competitors. After her parents passed and her brother took over the family ranch, she began training and competing full time. She now runs the Hey Now Equestrian Center, where she serves as an encouraging and knowledgeable mentor for aspiring equestrians. They live in Champions Grove. Throughout New Appaloosa's history, this lush grove has been home to many notable equestrian ultimate champions. Its serene environment creates a beautiful relaxation spot for champ and horse alike. The sims and structures may have changed over the years, but this spot will always draw top-notch equestrians to call it home. Bar is called the Oak Barrel. If you want to be among fellow nectar aficionados, the Oak Barrel is the spot for you to test your palate with nectar's delicate complexities. Classy with rustic elegance, it offers a flavor-filled respite from work. The empty residential is Cozy Corner House. This quaint, cozy cottage on the outskirts of the main promenade is perfect for raising mini goats and mini sheep. It was one of the first homes built in New Appaloosa and has since been remodeled whilst keeping its rustic homey feel. Complete with a small pen and animal feeder for your four-legged friends. And then finally, Duke's Hall is the park. Named after the trusty steed of legendary ultimate horse champion Don Gooseman, has everything riders and horses need to rest and prepare for the next competition. It also includes a social space to chat with fellow horse lovers, make Don and Duke proud by winning that ultimate horse championship. See, I find that a little bit weird because it's like to prepare before the next one, but your horses can only actually enter one horse competition a day. However, your rider can enter multiple if they are using a different horse every time. I know it's as confusing as getting Era's tour tickets. So this area is a lot flatter in comparison to the canyon of Galloping Gulch and you will actually find three different rabbit holes around here. Obviously, we've already mentioned the equestrian center. If you also go up Main Street on the right hand side, you will find a shop. You can plan your outfits here, which will just bring up create a sim so that you can actually switch your outfits up or you can change your outfit, which will just bring up the menu to change your wardrobe, just like changing outfit would do if you clicked it on the sim. And then if you cut across to the left, you will see a like triangular corner shop. And that is actually a food shop 
shop. So it, again, it is just a rabbit hole. You just get a pop up of like things that you can buy. You can buy mini sheeps and goats here. I keep saying sheeps. I'm so sorry. You also can buy groceries here. There's actually an age up treat. So if you want to age a foal right on up into an adult, you can straight away. And I will say, I don't know if people are going to be a fan of this. I personally didn't really like it, but I understand why it happened because obviously these places would feel so empty if this didn't actually happen. But it just felt like there were so many non Chestnut Ridge townies in both the bar and the nightclub. The nightclub was definitely worse. I feel like the sages are going to show up an awful lot or like the vampires if you have any occult. I think you'll have werewolves roaming around. It does mean that they are more fun because there's more people there technically. But for me, I would have preferred it if they had like heavily input the new townies in there. So it actually felt like a little community because that's actually how this world feels. Like they feel very welcoming and they want to teach you about the history and they want to teach you about horse riding skills and nectar making. But then you don't really get to see them out and about all that often. Riding isn't as fun in this area. There's really not as many paths. So you are going to do a lot of like looping around. But there is a cute little community garden, which has like two different planters and some decorative items. I will say there is a fair bit of set design in this world. I know not everyone was a fan of that when it came to San Sequoia. This is pretty similar. There are grills around and benches. So you can have like little barbecues if you want to. Finally, we have Riders Glen, which is a bit more of the countryside element and is comprised of another five lots. So we have two 30 by 20s. One of them is a empty residential. One of them is an already occupied residential. We have one 30 by 30, again, another empty residential. One 40 by 30, which is an occupied residential. And then one 64 by 64. So for everyone who wanted some big lots, they are there for you to build some ranches. The huge 64 by 64 lot is Red Roan Field, surrounded by the beautiful community of Riders Glen. This plot of land is prime real estate for anyone looking to start a ranch of their own, whether for horses, mini goats, or mini sheep, or all of the above. And then if you have cottage living, obviously those animals too. This is an ideal area to create precious memories with your ranch animal friends. I quite like this one. It's over a little river. It kind of feels like a little bit left out, which I think is really, really cute. Obviously, again, I would prefer it if horses could actually go down to the river and drink. I don't think any of it is swimmable from what I remember like trying to click on and seeing what was interactive. Then the 30 by 20 unoccupied residential is Grapevine Terrace. This property is perfect for those looking to indulge in a dynamic craft of nectar making. The inspiring views and breathtaking surroundings provide a luxurious environment for nectar enthusiasts. Impress your neighborhoods with an elegant estate that will have the entire Glen talking. The trailer actually focused very heavily on all of the townies of this pack, but the actual like trailer couple live in this area. They are the nectar making duo. This duo is working to get their name out into the nectar making scene. Marissa uses her outgoing personality and ambition to network. Danny is a connoisseur who lives for the delicate intricacies of their craft in nectar making. Their relationship can be strained at times, but deep down they have each other's back. Oh my word, their relationship is messy. I actually, whilst I was playing, got a notification from, I think it was Danny, being like, hey, should I go date this person? I was like, no, you should not. I feel like they're gonna bring the drama. I love them already. They live in Sweet Nectar Glade. Tucked away on the side of the Glen, the picturesque pocket of land provides privacy and beautiful scenery whilst being close to the rest of the community. This is also a great spot for any sim looking to take up nectar making. Well, they're already there. I'm not gonna kick them out, am I? We don't kick out the gays in this house. I love the familial bonds between the Grove family in this pack. They are so, so sweet. Umber and Juniper became childhood sweethearts when Umber would serenade... Okay, no, I take it back. I hate a serenadation. Serenade Juniper with odes to her equestrian prowess after taking horse riding lessons from his mother. When Umber's parents passed away, he took on the family ranch to honor his native heritage and his sister, Sienna, became the horse trainer in town. The son, Ren, has a passion for animals and is training Starbright, the foal of Umber's childhood rescue horse, all set to the sweet, peaceful soundtrack of Umber's odes on the porch. Tristy Steed Rock 
Rock or Old Biscuit watches over this land as the ever-present, larger-than-life sentinel of the Glen. That's basically the big horse rock that you can see at any given opportunity whilst you're in this neighbourhood. And then finally, there is Canter Cottage. This ready-to-go home is perfect for multiple folks ready to dive into the world of livestock and horses. Surrounded by the friendly community of the Glen, this is an excellent starting point for any aspiring equestrian. Again, there's the new little grills set up and little picnic areas. I actually caught Bob Pancakes out here grilling up something delicious. Still have riding trails in this neighborhood. Again, they're not quite as fun. This is why I prefer Galloping Gulch personally. But when your sims and your horses can't actually travel to like a place because it's obviously outside of like the walkable zone, which we are used to in The Sims 4, they have this like bridge which has a no horses sign on it. And I just think the little environment nods like that, even though obviously it's like, restricted and it's telling you that you can't go there like it's not clickable. I like that they thought about the design and how they could actually implement objects to sort of tell the story. I don't know I just appreciated that so I wanted to give the developers a little head nod. Moving on to the townies relationships to see if the law actually matches up to what we see in the relationships panel. I will say for some reason growing together stayed installed on my early access which that's never really happened before. I I think it was fully my fault. I think I forgot to like fully uninstall my growing together one, but it's kind of good for you lot because obviously this then shows the compatibility that people have. Compatibility, family dynamics, still all part of growing together. There's no new ones introduced in Horse Ranch. The law said that Don Gooseman is a retired horse champion and obviously Duke has his own park named after him. I'm fairly sure he was an ultimate champion as well, which is kind of disappointing because his Bio actually says that he hasn't won any competitions. He is actually worth a lot of money, obviously, because he has really, really high skills. The more your skills go up, the higher you can actually sell your horse for. So that was definitely a disappointment for me personally. And also, he's only an acquaintance with Don, which just feels silly because, like, if they've lived this incredible life together, you would have thought that they were, like, best friends. And that kind of goes for everyone. Obviously, Don was the mentor to Sienna and Umba's mother. So he does know the kids and they are friends with one another. They actually have a fair few sentiments about each other, like deeply connected, closer from happy memories, impressed. So it kind of just feels like they gave them the standard friendship and that is pretty much the way it's gonna go for like every single townie. It feels like a close-knit community, but they are all only friends. So it just feels like the standard. I mean, it maybe could be that Duke just wasn't Don's horse that he became ultimate horse champion with, which I mean kind of would make sense as he's an elder. So that might just be me being bad at maths, but I still think that he would have won like some competitions. For Sienna's relationship, again, she is merely acquaintances with her horse, which again just seems ridiculous. And I don't know how the team actually like set up relationships. I don't know if they do it like I do it, for example, with my save files and they just do it through cheats but basically to cheat your relationship with a horse you have to know their sim id and i think it's actually impossible within the game if your horse has like two first names and they have a space in between them i don't think you can get a sim id i think that might be where the issues came in she is again friends with umba her brother her nephew ren and then also roberto but she is however good friends with juniper Grove, her sister-in-law. They have the deeply connected and closer from happy memories sentiments together. Her and Roberto have a very interesting sentiment and it's awed by life-saving hero. I'm fairly sure she like maybe passed away and then he may have brought her back to life with Nectar. I'm not 100% sure if that is the case. It just gave a very generic description of what this sentiment was. It didn't go into any details about how he was a life-saving hero, but I do think it's very, very interesting. I also don't know when Umber's and Sienna's parents are meant to have passed away in this story, but the sentiments make it feel like it was quite recent. Considering they both have the friends in time of a loss sentiment towards each other, Sienna feels adoring towards Umber and he feels deeply connected to Sienna. And then with her nephew Ren, she is adoring of him and he has closer from happy 
happy memories. But I told you these two were gonna be bringing the drama and the drama they are bringing. They actually do have a pretty good relationship in their relationship panel. They are at least friends and they have a pretty high romance bar. But obviously if you do have growing together, you will soon find out that they have bad compatibility. They are also grudging after a fight. However, Danny feels really deeply connected to Marissa. So I just don't think these two are on the same page. And then do not ask me what has gone on between Marissa and poor little Ren Grove because their relationship is atrocious. They dislike each other. However, they apparently have good compatibility. And then Marissa is furious at Ren and then he feels guilty about something. What has this child done? I don't know if he's maybe just been like playing pranks, if he's been like stealing nectar. Clearly some beef has gone down. And then Danny's only other acquaintance is actually Roberto. I'm assuming they maybe want to get to know him to get their name out into the nectar business, but they just haven't had chance to do that yet. It also does say that these two are unemployed because obviously they are focusing on their nectar making. So I really kind of wish that there was some, maybe even a freelance career for nectar making. I know obviously you can like apply to be self-employed and like create your own title, which is like fine. But I think just to add some gameplay that wasn't really rabbit holes or obviously just to do with like horses, I wish there was a freelance career where clients could actually call you up and be like, hey, we need six bottles of like your finest nectar outside of just selling it to Roberto or going to like a maker's market if you have eco lifestyle and selling it there. And then the big old family, the Grove family. But Juniper is actually once again, just acquaintances with Luna who is Umber's rescue horse from when he was a child. Umber is obviously not really like into competing or anything like that. She hasn't won any competitions. Her skills aren't that great. Umber's just like, I just want a horse. I wanted to rescue this horse. I love her, which I do find that she doesn't have the temperament skill because if he's caring for her really, really well, that would just like grow naturally. So that's one thing I would have liked to see. Her and Umber are actually smitten with one another and then Starbright the foal, again, just another acquaintance. She is a friend of Don's and is impressed by him. And then finally her son Ren is her friend. She is adoring of him and he actually went to her recently for some friendly advice. And then finally, Ren is actually friends with Roberto. They are deeply connected and Ren is impressed by him, which I mean, makes sense. If I found out that someone was like living forever as a kid, I would be obsessed with them. I would be begging my parents to take me to see Roberto like, every weekend. Unfortunately, Ren and his little foal do suffer from the same fate as all of the horses in this pack. They are only acquaintances. And again, the temperament skill is only a level one. I know she is a foal, but like the family bio literally called out that like he was trying to train her, which I'm fairly sure the only skill that foals can get because obviously you can't ride them about and they also can't take part on any of the obstacles like the barrels or the jumping. They can actually only get the temperament skill. So I kind of wish they had set that maybe to like a three so that you could still practice hand feeding. And then with his dad, Umber, they both have adoring sentiments to one another and they are in fact good friends. I'm sorry that I also fully forgot to like check out the traits for everyone. You can kind of see some of them in their bios and you can also see some of the careers as well. But I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gave you all the info you needed about all of the town their relationships and also the world. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I honestly might write like people's traits in the comments once I actually get my hands on like the full version of the game and like check it all out. And also maybe milestones. I really wanna find out what the drama is between Marissa and Ren. I wanna see what that kid has done. I feel like we should all leave our theories in the comments down below. Let me know how you feel about the townies. Let me know how you feel about the world, the neighborhoods, all of that. And I will speak to you all in my next one. Bye now.